M0 FXB, welcome to my channel. So you've got yourself an Anytone 878 from somewhere like Moonraker and they've already installed the, the uh, code plug on it for you. And you've decided you want to get yourself a hotspot, which looks like this. And you just want to get the thing working now. I've got one here, it's up and running now. We'll just turn it up. So that's what it sounds like. When it's on uh, when it's on DMR, so we just turn it round. So need to do one step at a time. So you've got the radio. First thing you want to do is uh, fire up your co plug. Let's um, so download the the co plug software, which you will find on Ma on Moonraker Martin Lynch website things like that. I'll just show you where you can find that. So if you go to the like the Moonraker website, there's other places as well. Scroll down and you'll here's the radio 878 868 they're all pretty much similar that but they do have their their own uh, co-plug version so go to the the correct radio and then scroll down and you'll see a place here where you can download all the files and in that files you'll get the CPS programming software and anything else you need so once you've got the CPS programming software then um, fire it up like so and you're going to need to connect your USB cable. So um, let's show you what that looks like. So it looks like this. Uh, forget the price. That's what it looks like. And uh, you're going to need to get the, dri the driver for it. So I'll put the links in for this. So install your driver. Now this is the site I always go to to find that particular driver. Any tone. And just look. scroll down. Programming software. USB cable drivers, here's one here, 878. So click that and load it. So when you connect the radio, which I'll quickly do now, you go into your device manager. So plug it in, oh, turn it on. You know, I recommend you don't plug it in when it's on like I just did. Right click your device manager like so. Then click ports. Double click the ports and there it is there, GD32 virtual COM port and it's COM port 5. If it doesn't say that, you haven't got the driver installed. So we fired up the, the code plug and the first thing I would do is read the radio. So just check your COM port first. So you just go set, set COM and then on mine it was 5, wasn't it? So select 5, click OK. And then what I would do is read, the, read from the radio like so. Click OK. N normally I would read all the digital contacts the first time, but then I would untick that box, leave the other box ticked, click OK. And that's just the reason I'm doing that is because uh, I'm, I'm just making sure that, the, that I'm on the correct. Um... Right, sorry about the glitch, but it, I had the wrong so software, but it's doing the right one now. So it's reading from the radio, so that means I can make sure that the co plug I'm using is completely up to date with the radio. So that's good. It will reboot. So we know that what I can see on my screen and what is on the radio is the same. And we're going to minimize that ready for, for when we add our hotspot. So minimize that. Next thing we need to do is we've got ourselves a, a hotspot, a jumbo hotspot, as you can see here. And we just want to power it up. But first of all, we need to add our username and password details onto the SD card. So what you do is take the SD card out of the, of the jumbo spot. It just slips out here, like so. Hopefully you can see that. And put it into the computer using an adapter. When you've done that, go to pystar.uk, as you can see on the screen here, and click Pystar Tools and go to the one that's called Wi-Fi Builder. Now I'm presuming that the SD card that you've put into your laptop has already got all the image, they call it, for running your Jumbo Hotspot. If it hasn't, that is for a separate video to install that. But for now, um, we're just going to put in our username and password of our router. Okay, so let's just say that the username is just, for example, is user and the password 
is um, password. That'll do, just for an example. Then click Submit, okay? Now you're gonna get this file here. Now click the file, the arrow, and click Show in Folder. Which you should do now. It'll get highlighted. Now right click it, either copy it or send it to, and you're gonna send it to your SD card. It'll probably be like your E drive or something. So mine's not plugged in the PC, but you get the idea. And so once that's on the SD card, then get the SD card and plug it into your, into your back into your hotspot. And if it's a this style hotspot, there's a, there's like a slit in the side so that you slide it in. So just be careful to get it in the right gap. Then get the USB power and just plug it into your hotspot and let it boot. And at first you won't, you won't see anything. So what you then do is open a new window and type in, so what you've got to type in, pi-star-dot-local, then a slash like that. Now, if it's correct, underneath it'll go, it'll go blue if you're running Windows 10. So just click down to that and click Enter. Let's just do that again. I must have selected the wrong one. pi dash star Right, let's do it here. Let's give that a go. Let's just pause. I probably have to reboot it. Okay, so you've got pi star dot local and you'll come to a window and what it will say, it'll be it'll be blank. It won't be like mine's active because it's I've configured it. It will say something like user defined. So what you do is click configuration and put in the pi the password, uh, which will be pi dash star like so then raspberry r-a-s-p-b-e-r-r-y and then click sign in and that you will get you into the configuration page which looks like this now you for dmr you need to just copy what i've done so a couple of blue dots here i uh, look it's even telling me that i can upgrade which you would do just by clicking update here then or expert and then upgrade again i'll do that in a second uh, at the end of this video, but I'm just going to show you how to get everything correct now. What, turn on DMR, get your frequency in that you, you're you going to put into your 878, so on here it's 431550. Get that in the annual DMR number, which is really important. Uh, you can call it what you like, don't worry about all the rest for now. Uh, and then hit apply, and when it, when it comes back, then you'll get the option then to add this section here, which is the OLED screen or unless you've got a, a, bit, a big next to you on the screen. Got the little puppy in the background. Um, and so select that and also scroll down. So you're at the top and just scroll down, MMDVM host, go down one more, general configuration. Now see where it says radio modem type, you definitely have to, have to select that, okay? So exactly as this one is here, STM32 DVM, MMDVM, HS, Raspberry Pi Hat, GPIO. So select that. Apply changes, it takes a few minutes. And when it comes back, then you can then choose your, your DMR master here, BM231, look, see that there? And see this bit here where it says hotspot security? You're gonna to need to put that in and to set up hotspot security, I'll just show you that now. So go to the brandmeister.network page, create yourself an account, go into settings, uh, just to prove that, go into settings, and then scroll, what you want to do is you're trying to go to the section where you put in your, your uh, password. So once you've logged in, click your, you know, that's me there, M0FXB, go to self-care. And then see, scroll to under self-care settings, see where it says hotspot security, turn that on and put it, create your password here, make one up and then click save. And then that will link up with your with your hotspot. So go back to your hotspot. And so in this section here, put your Brandmeister password, which is really important, then apply the changes again. So eventually, when you've done all that, you'll be able to click dashboard here. Okay, so you can see flashing away in the background, my radio is working already. And if I key the mic, you can see that I'll, I appear there in, in two places on the dashboard here. And the, this local RF activity, you only see that when you key up. So the next point is now to get 
the same frequencies that we've got here and other settings into our actual code plug. So let's go to the code plug. So we're back at the code plug. And so what you want to do is create yourself a zone. So go to zone here, double click zone. Make sure you've got a zone that you've dedicated for your hotspot because eventually you'll have more than one hotspot. So we'll go to one of my zones here that's been created. Now, if you wanted to create a new a new zone, just scroll down, hit, scroll down to the bottom of your zones and then double, say 44 here is blank, double click it here like so, and then create a new zone, just call it, we'll just call it hot spot. Oh, I'll put a Z there so I can find it. And then for now, add any channel. So click on the left side and send it across add any channel for now just so it creates the zone so we've got the zone there now we've got to check create the channel the same as my hotspot so now go up double click channel you have a massive long list come up and go to the bottom of that list ready to create your brand new channel for your hotspot so i'm just going to get to the bottom of that So we've got to the bottom, so double click the blank channel here, 1151 it is, double click it, and then call it, um, I'm going to call it so we can find it, this hot spot, yeah, and then put the same frequency as your, what was in the Pi star, and if you remember it was 431.550, and that's on transmit and receive, this is a simplex hotspot, 431.550, okay. And then the first, let's just for now just create talk group nine because you can use that to um, link to any repeater or hotspot and then you can just use the radio to type in which talk group you want to go to. So you're going to have to add, change this to talk group nine. So you've created the frequency, you select digital here, do the power, you know, really low really if you're at home. Um, the rest looks fine. But we do need to change worldwide to number nine and you'll find it right at the bottom number nine so nine is like it's called nine local so double click that nine is like a link between your radio and your hotspot it's not actually linking you to the repeaters and the world it's just more of a method of controlling the radio so click that and then i would do color code one and i'll just do slot two for now click o okay so just remember my settings here click okay so you've now created the channel we need to put the channel in the zone so go back to the zone double click the zone that you created remember we put any old channel in well we're not going to use that go all the way to the bottom find that hotspot channel select it and then send it to the right and to send things back out of your channel just select the one you don't want and send it back so you, you'll basically imagine that you're your zone is like a group or a, a big cup and you're putting chucking in the channels that you've created into that cup so that when you turn the middle knob on your 878 you can select within that zone all the channels you've put in it but we've only we're only going to have one channel in our zone so there it is there so it's called this hotspot um, it's in the zone so we can click OK for now and if we send that to our radio go program right to radio and then you'll see the radio change in a sec and then what we'll do we'll find that zone and then I'll show you how to actually communicate with the hotspot just give that a minute to complete okay that's in the radio now let's just let the radio reboot Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go into our, into our radio, we're going to go menu, and then we're going to find that zone, which we called hotspot with a Z, select it, select zone, and there's only one channel in this zone, and it's on talk group 9, so if I key, it should appear, ah, oh, someone else is talking, you can't key when, when someone else is talking, so I'll just try now. Right, there's me. I'm now on talk group nine. So I'll just show you that I'm on talk group nine. Right, you can see there. I'll just key again. We're on, I'm on talk group nine. There you go. So I'm not connected to anything. Talk group nine is just connecting me to the hotspot. So now, if you want to connect to talk group 91, 
Now watch what we do. We push the button underneath the PTT. And we, then we push the hash. And then we type in 91. And then we push the PTT again. And now look at the PyStar dashboard. Right. It now says 91 on the dashboard. If I turn it up, I'll unplug the, uh, the lead. Unplug the lead. And you'll be able to hear Talk Group 91 working with a bit of luck. Now, someone was talking, then it went quiet, of course. Um, but they'll chat again. I'll just show you how to up, update it. So go to configuration, like so. Go to expert, and then click upgrade. And while, whilst it's upgrading, it will all reboot and do that. So that's it, really. So this will get you up and running. And remember, you can type in any talk group you like using that talk group nine trick. Remember, uh, if you're into a hub net, the talk group is 23526. That's the, the one I like to use. Um, and then talk group 91 is busy, I think, 2350. And... Yeah, just uh, just have a Google on available talk groups. I think it's on the it's listed on the on the Brandmeister site here somewhere. All the different talk groups you can you know you can use. So that's it, really. So seven three, and hope this helps. All the best.